You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, in the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Vegas After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424 256 1729. That's 424. 424- 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Vegas After Show. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, After Buzzers. Bing is for doing, and today we're doing the season slash series finale of CBS's Vegas. <laughs> Yes, bam. I know. That's how we feel. That's how we all feel. We're going to miss Dennis Quaid and Michael Chiklis. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey, and joining me today is... Bam Erickson. And uh, Nick Perdue. Bam Erickson and Nick Perdue here joining me today. Ladies and gentlemen, after buzzers, boys and girls. (laughs) Yes. So, we have reached the season finale. No, Uh, it's, it's, it's a finale. It's the finale finale. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, it was good. It was probably the best episode all season long. The best uh, for and it will be the best episode of the actual series as well because it has not been renewed for season two, unfortunately. But we will talk about that in news and gossip. Uh, why, which, where, when, and how as far as that is concerned and how Amy Garcia and Steve Rizzo were really good at keeping that under wraps if they knew because when they came in, they gave us no indication that that was going to happen or occur. So, kudos to them on doing their part. I don't think they knew. Uh, you don't think so? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they actually knew. Okay. Because, well, we'll talk about it in these Yeah, we'll talk about it. But let's talk about the episode. Let's talk about the actual story. Let's talk about the season finale. The season, uh, the episode starts off with Jack. He's in the hospital. He's visiting Catherine. We get a flashback of all the past episodes, of course. And we see Jack. I'm sorry, not Jack. Ralph. Ralph is in the hospital visiting Catherine. She got, uh, she had an attempt on her life by what seems to be Gainsley and the underhanded ranchers, the dirty ranchers. Um, and she's laying in the hospital bed unconscious. Now here's here's my problem with that. Okay, mm. this is the is the last episode, yeah. right? And poor I'm Carrie Ann Moss. I'm not even gonna call her a character, but poor Carrie Ann Moss yeah. couldn't get one word in edgewise because she's laying up in the hospital bed in a coma. Well, some of the biggest scenes of acting is doesn't have any dialogue whatsoever. But she didn't even really get any FaceTime though. Like we we got like a quick headshot and then pan down to the body and then up to everyone else. Like she was just in the room when, you know, stuff was going on. Well let me tell you what I don't like about it. What I don't like about it is that we're not gonna get a chance to see this relationship develop and flourish. That's true. And we don't even get a chance to see her acknowledge him expressing himself to her. Yeah. He he obviously didn't come out and say I love you. I love you. He but, was going that route yeah. until Toupee Boy comes in and knocks on the door. <laughs> Good old nick of time, and, Agent Byrne. Yeah, Agent Byrne <laughs> comes in and knocks on the door. And nick you know, and, and Nick, Nick, Nick made a good point. That this guy, they have written all the good lines for this yeah, guy. This guy got all the like the great one liners. Mm-hmm. Um, but he comes the great in innuendos. Yeah, all mm-hmm. the little the puns. Exactly. And he kind of, for some reason, they they set a tone with this guy that he even seems untouchable. He even seems seems untouchable touchable when he um he confronts the the attorney general of the state which is really funny but um yeah the agent Byrne is is quite the character if if i might, must say so myself yeah. i mean uh it was a great they, they, they casted well for this guy whoever whoever i can't remember the guy's name um not that i can't remember i don't think i ever knew the guy's name but he's i've seen him in a number of different projects uh film and television and stuff go although, ahead bam although it would have been cliche it would have been great had once Burns had came into the room, like maybe if she's lying there and maybe she could have just kind of like opened her eye real quick and saw it and closed her eyes back <laughs> just to know that she heard the conversation um, of what was of what 
uh, Ralph was saying to her. Like squeeze his hand or something. Yeah, or just something yeah, or some kind of acknowledgement. Yeah, some, some kind of acknowledgement. Or maybe not, maybe for him not to even know that she knew. But like maybe when Burns came in, you know, she's laying there and maybe she opens one oh, wait, I can't do it, but maybe she like opens one eye and closes her eye that at least lets the audience know that right. she heard what Ralph was saying. Right, right. Maybe uh, I don't know. Yeah, they do but they do that a lot. Like you said, it's cliche, yeah. so maybe they kinda wanna stay away from it. Maybe they're like But it's the sixties, come on. I mean I don't know. What yeah. do you think about that, Nick? I mean, it would have been nice, you know, to for for I, I just wanted more from her. That's, that's all I wanted. So even if, if that little sliver was in there, because maybe it was, but maybe they cut it out. Right. So you know, even if that little sliver was in there, just to kind of give us as an audience, you know, because like essentially this was a curtain call, you know, for most of the of the characters who haven't been killed off, you know, in the series for this last final episode, and so to kind of give Catherine like her her little just do, you know, because they didn't even really give her, like, throughout the season, they didn't really give her a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, they gave her way more towards, especially the towards second Towards the end. No, but it was like, I would say the second half of the season. They, they started giving her a, a lot more, like, I, I'll the say the last the quarter. The last quarter. quarter. Fourth, fourth quarter, then they then they put, because, you know, then, then they put her in. That means only five or six episodes. I would give her at least ten episodes of good play. The first half of the season was kind of, like, dry as far as her character was concerned, and then they picked it up, like, halfway through. That's what I would say. At least, at least a, a last third. And I vote your way. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think gave her more than than a quarter. That's uh, what 22 episodes. That's like what six. That's like only six. A quarter would be like six episodes. Uh, all well, yeah, well, not not I counting not counting this, this last episode. So, <laughs> so the six be. That's what that. that's what George Bush calls fuzzy math. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Let's talk about uh, Savino and Ralph in this deal cutting situation that they made. So Ralph is not the sheriff anymore because Gainsley pulled some strings with the attorney general because uh, the attorney general is in his pocket and he got Ralph's badge stripped from him. Yeah. So now Ralph is walking around as the badgeless sheriff or he's sheriff as a rancher with guns. So, and Jack is now the, the sheriff, interim, the interim sheriff. sheriff. Yeah. Uh, so which I knew that was gonna happen, which is kind of strange. Well, it kind of doesn't make any sense to me how they didn't oust the whole lamb posse yeah. from the the town. Like it would have made sense if they got rid of all of them. I mean, you think that Jack's not gonna listen to his brother when it comes to the law just because he's the quote unquote the sheriff? But I think the right thing to do. If oh, they were just trying to make a point. Maybe. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think so. The right thing to do is what? The right thing to do is if. You know, it's like the the president, vice president. The president goes, the vice president steps up. Right. Well, yeah. that, well, that's what happened. But we saw how that worked out. I mean, uh, Ralph is now the the Lone Ranger, and he's uh, a Tontoless Lone Ranger. A vigilante. He, right. He's gone off on his own, and he has taken the incriminating uh, wiretap tapes and gone to cut a deal with. Savino, mm -hmm. so uh, he's he's PO'd obviously for very good reasons. He has what? He's, he's discovered that you know Gainsley is the one that killed his wife. He did, and and you know I think the the thing with that though is that because you know he has this vengeance now that he needs, but you know like, like when he was talking to Savino, you know he says the reason why I'm coming to you is because I don't want my family to get into this right you know and i i know that you are an expert in making people disappear, disappear right you know so it it makes sense to you know bring savino into this you know and he had a little little leverage with the tapes right so it, it was kind of like you but know did like he have leverage were, well, did, he, did he have leverage with the tapes well, with the tapes because as far as my understanding was concerned it's a, an illegal wiretap and it would be inadmissible in court or was it just for them to build evidence so they could set him up it was, it was probably just just for them to, to build the evidence and then because I mean really like at the end of the day so it's like like if it was an illegal wire wiretap but it was still it it gives now that that uh just cause to really you know dig in to see what's what's going on with Savino and right. with the money laundering and this and that yeah so like it's it's a the, the door that would open you know you can't use the door anymore mm -hmm. but at least opens it up to see what's going on right and they don't also play by the law 100 mm percent -hmm. so even if they use even if they go by the law 95 96 97 percent by them having that evidence 
when it's time to not use fully the law, that one or two percent where they kind of step out the law, they will use it in that instance. Right. Well, I found out, you know, it was very interesting that they had to end up teaming up or quote unquote working together. Why did you find it interesting? Well, I mean, it was going to eventually come to that, and Nick had made that prediction mm-hmm. in the beginning kind of, yeah. of the season. Yeah, at the very beginning of the season, he made that uh, prediction that these guys were going to have to, and there was going to be a scenario that was that would develop that would bring them together because you saw in the beginning how they developed the characters. They were basically two sides of the same coin, pretty much, yeah. and uh, that the way that they were setting their characters up and their backstories. There, it would only make sense that they would have to work together in some capacity at, with a common with a common interest, and it turned out to be Gainsley. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did a good job of presenting the Gainsley character and uh, making this guy a formidable adversary. Agree. So let's talk about uh, Jack and uh, Mia. And Jack goes to visit Mia, yes. and uh, he says, you know, he's at the door and he's looking at the ring, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do this. And he, you know, knocks on Mia's door. Mia answers the door, and he basically like, shuts him down. Uh, uh, basically, dang, can we go through the scenario? <laughs> I want to, you know, he's like, uh, I got something I want to talk to you about. She's like, I got what someone to talk to you about first. I go first. Yeah, I go first. That's yes, that's what she says. She says I go first. So then I think that conversation went completely unlike he expected of obviously because he was going to go propose but the thing i mean what do you guys what is your opinion and this is a question i have for you guys if you guys want to call in 424-256-1633 about this because my opinion is that i think me as being, being short-sighted was being short-sighted and she she was lacking vision as far as what i think she thought jack wanted for their relationship I think she thought Jack just wanted her barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen, baking biscuits, like she said, or cooking biscuits and popping out kids. That's not, to me, what I thought that Jack had in mind. I think Jack saw that she was a powerful woman, and she was savvy in her her universe, mm-hmm. in, in that, uh, that social climate that she was working in. And Jack had expertise in his. And when he took her, was it, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks before, when he took her to show her all the land, it was like, look, I'm thinking about doing something with this land. You know, I figure you're good at numbers. You can run the numbers, and I'll do the ranching. So he could be the boss on over here while she's the boss over here, and they could, like, have, like, this empire together. This mm-hmm. is what I think, as far as I'm concerned, this is what I think his vision was. I don't think he expected her or his plans or expectations for her was for her to be, you know, for her to be well, at home popping out kids and baking biscuits because no. obviously not her. I mean, she was she was still going to be home, but she was just going to handle the business side of the ranch. So, like, you know, so when it's not about, you know, crunching the numbers or anything, that's, you know, like mm-hmm. numbers for, you know, the cattle and you know, whatever else they were they were ranching and farming and this and that. So, you know, I, it was going to be a profitable business. Right. You know, and it was something that they were going to make from the ground up, you know, right. and so like like she would have been... They put know, their money the, together like he said. Like, yeah, you put and so money. 500 acres, is like, it's, a, it's a lot of land. Yeah, you can do some damage with that. You can make some money. Um, Thaddeus, I agree with you that I don't think that was his intention, but I also think her being the savvy businesswoman, w- woman, rather than just com- completely cut it down, he came with his idea and his vision of how they were going to raise a ranch together but then the smart businesswoman that she is she could have added to it and say this would be a great idea not only can we do this and then throw in a suggestion mm-hmm. to help with it being a ranch last something else and build it into like i don't think she was willing to think outside the box like mm, like right. uh, like jack was she saw it one way when clearly that's not what he meant. But I think also maybe he could have said something like whether uh, besides just uh, building a ranch together, Mm -hmm. he maybe could have said, you know, we can start it off as a ranch and then from there we can do blah, 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 blah. Right. Mm. I mean, I mean, look at look at something like medieval times where they have the horses and they have like this whole show. They could have easily turned this, you know, he could have had the ranch and they could have easily maybe turned that into some kind of, Maybe there could have been a restaurant. Mm-hmm. You have the ranch experience, and you get to pay people. To, they could have, they could have, have been easily the first saddle ranch. exactly. Mm-hmm. It could have been the first saddle ranch. 
That was Nicholas Perry. If you guys want to call in and make a comment as far as the first Saddle Ranch <laughs> out in the 500 acres that Mia and uh, Jack would have had. Write some real bulls this time. But they were right. right exactly. <laughs> but the thing about it is, I just think that she was scared. I think she was scared that he wanted to change her too much. And then the fact that she he wanted her out of that quote-unquote business, I think he just really wanted her away from Savino. I think he would just have rather her be on in a legitimate hotel as opposed to knowing that she worked for the mob. Right. And yeah. it would be under constant scrutiny and her, her her livelihood would be constantly and her safety would be constantly compromised. I mean, I think any man that's like natural, he doesn't want his girl in that kind of environment. I really don't think it was so much of the hotel casino. Mm -hmm. I think it was the whole mob aspect that really was the problem and the whole criminal the criminal enterprise. That well, was I mean, yeah, because at the end of the day, like he's the law. And she's the other side of the law. Right. So, you know, and like what her mother said, I mean, like, how long is that really going to last? Like, if someone doesn't make a change and he's not going to make a change. So, you know, because like, right. he, he's not going to go criminal. Right. You know, right. so like, like his biggest change would be like if he just stops, you know, stops working for the sheriff's office, then he'll just be ranching. And so right. it's not like he's not going to become, you know, a mobster. Right. So, you know, someone had to change like there had to be some give there had to be a little you know adjustment and so she wasn't willing to make that adjustment you know because like she was about that mob life and that's where you know she felt well let me tell you somebody else who's about that life tommy stone was about that life and he's actually appealing to me and mia is actually is. feeling this guy even though she's trying to suppress it and hide it i think she sees this this guy as a actually somebody who is when well, he's from LA so let's you know. right he's got some, <laughs> She's from LA. some I don't swagger I don't think she, she, I don't think Mia likes swagger. stone like that but it's it's a um, it's a crush you it, think it's a crush it's, it's a animal crush. instinct That's yeah it it's a crush it's um it's something that you want to tempt it's something that you want to try for the short term well, here's the thing. There's nobody in her circle or that arena or that lifestyle that's really approaching her. And yeah. he's a young, handsome kid, and he's he's doing his thing. Talks fast, knows how to use his right. hands. And although know, he's, he's quote-unquote her boss, he doesn't treat her like, you're my boss. Yeah. He, it's just like it only is technical, like it comes out in words. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not like subservient or like, oh. Blah, he's blah, very blah. quick with his tongue. Exactly. Yeah. He likes that. Oh, brother. And he takes it upon himself <laughs> to to even grab her and kiss her. Like, you know. And she doesn't really he pull away. Her down. She doesn't slap him. Anything. Yeah, because mm -hmm. she's, kind of, she's turned on by it. She's yes. turned on by it. You know, for for Mia, you would expect for her to like those kind of guys. Like, But it's typical for her. It, it is typical. Yeah. But it was, also, it was also different how she fell into liking... Um, how she fell into Jack. liking Jack, which is why she truly loves him because he's different. He's just a sweet um, Stone is just a sweet talker that just kind of grabbed her attention. Yeah, and Stone kind of seems like the kind of guy who was like, after he gets her, he's done. He's like, yeah, I'm used to. He's used to getting the girls. All the girls want to be on blah blah. blah. He Another threw a couple notch of, on the bell. Yeah, exactly. You know, a girl looks like you and as powerful as you. But you know what? He he might hold on to her a little bit longer because she's as powerful yeah, as she is. Yeah, because of her and because influence. And because of her influence and because she's a, a you know a organized crime and a mob family. Yeah. It's like she he may be forced to she's take more interest. Life. Right. You know, he's in the entertainment business. He's not. A yeah. mobster. This but, kid is, you know. Well, never knew. It's entertainment. But right let well, me tell you guys, if you are about that life, especially at home, what you need to do is go ahead and download your iTunes podcast for iTunes, all of your favorite iTunes, iTunes, uh, iTunes, After Buzz TV shows, iTunes, especially this one. This is like this, the iTunes, last one here. So iTunes, if you haven't iTunes, seen iTunes, any of the past ones that we did, just go iTunes, download the entire catalog, iTunes, all 22 episodes. ITunes, like, iTunes, comment, and subscribe. ITunes, and uh, tell your friends, tell your parents, and have a good time. And don't forget that now you guys can download um, all of our podcasts on Apple devices Apple and devices. for Androids. Apple, Apple, yeah, you can keep us in, in your pocket Apple, Android, all iTunes. day. Apple, Android, iTunes. Yeah, and you guys can also subscribe to us on Twitter, After Buzz TV, and uh, YouTube. You guys can subscribe to us, After Buzz TV, and you guys can call in 424 256 1633 here. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, Bam, or Nick Olis, Instagram, uh, or Instagram, After or TV. After Buzz, yeah, Instagram, uh, 
after Buzz TV as well. If you guys have any pictures or, you know, say you caught, uh, if you guys caught uh, Michael Chiklis or Amy Garcia or Dennis Quaid at, uh, at Starbucks or something like that, and you got a quick picture with them, you can go ahead and post it up and we'll go ahead and repost it and uh, give you a shout out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, okay, so going back to the episode, let's talk about this plan that Savino and Ralph had to go put the kibosh to on bring. to draw out yeah, Gainsley. Gainsley. So they have this plan. It was to, smart. It was smart. It they was had a plan to draw him out because obviously this guy is well insulated. He's in this compound and on his ranch and his he has like I guess his military type <laughs> security with mm-hmm. machine guns and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if he has that, but he has enough security where they can't just go head up and go get the guy. Yeah. So they have to wait till he gets out. Now or wait till they can pull him out or wait till they know he's gonna be out and not being in such a high security type situation. Now the thing is this guy doesn't want to be in the rancher business anymore. He sees no, his he completely com, his future completely in Vegas. He says it's not neon. cattle ranching. His cattle ranching interest he's gonna sell, and his future is in neon. So, yeah, they plan to get this guy at the cattle auction when he's gonna be out. Unfortunately, <laughs> for Savino and Ralph, what happens? Well. So Jack and Dixon, right? They're like, listen, I don't know what your daddy's going to do, but we need to stop him before something happens because, you know, like he can start this bloodbath and, and this war and then, you know, it's all she wrote. Right. So, you know, Dixon takes it upon him. To, well, because yeah, they're trying to, try to figure out where Ralph went because they didn't know where he, he went. Right. And then so after a quick um, dialogue with Yvonne, Dixon turns around, sees one of, you know, the local deputies there reading a newspaper when he should be working, right? Rips the newspaper out of his hand and sees that there's a cattle auction going on. So he figures, okay. Tell him to get back to work. I'd have been like, kid, if you don't go sit at your desk. <laughs> and this guy's obviously, like, way older than him. I'd have been like, uh. Yeah, but he's, me, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a, a lower-ranking officer. Though. I'm going to put you over my knee. So. Anyway. Dixon. And then Dixon goes and screws up the whole plan with Savino and Ralph. Yeah, he, like he should. Well, he, he goes. Sh- and, he should have shot Gainsley. Well, he did. No, he okay, he should have shot to kill. Shot him dead. Yeah. Yeah. But totally. he went out there and he was like, teary eyed. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Emotion. You that's know this guy that's, kills that's, your mama. That's you, you okay? That's called being young and inexperienced. Yeah. Letting your emotions get the best of you. you well, know? I mean, he shot a guy who was about to sh- shoot his dad at the at the robbery. But that's the different, though. That's that, that's like you know, like this is like if if you know someone's like if if you don't shoot, this person will kill your father right there. You kill this person. Gainsley didn't really have a, a gun on him to like you know like if Yvonne had the gun to her head, you know, and it was Gainsley had the gun to Yvonne's head, mm-hmm. then he probably would have would have shot him, no right. questions asked. Right. But this was like a kind of a standoff. Right. You know what I mean? So, well, different. I was a little upset about that, obviously, because I was expecting Savino and Ralph to take Gainsley out. Dixon comes in the, in the and episode. foils the plan. But if if Dixon would not have done that, then it wouldn't have taken us to um, yeah to the final come yeah. down. It, it, I mean, it that's been the true. End of the that's true because it happened like 15 minutes in. Yeah, yeah. it would have been like like right, a quick 15, 30 minute 30 minute <laughs> season okay, finale. Bye guys, <laughs> he's dead. Okay, so. Um, Dixon screws up the plan, so now the group has to go, or the guys have to go and regroup and figure out how they're going to go about taking Gainsley down. Yeah. Uh, so now you've got, you know, uh, Ralph. I'm sorry, not Ralph, but Savino is going to take off. He tells yeah. Mia's mom, her name is Leah, right? Yeah. So he tells Leah, she's like, look, you got to go lay low. He's going to go lay low. He already has the tapes. The tapes have been burned. And he's going to take off. And Ralph confronts him while he's pulling off in his car and says, you know, I'm a man of my word. And it was odd, oddly enough, that was enough for this guy to get park his car in the middle of the driveway or middle of the street and get yeah, out of his car gone. and go off on Ralph. Like, I'm a, my word is gold. Like, how dare you, blah, 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 blah type of thing. And <sighs> car blows up in a million pieces. Holds on. It's 1960, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, 
Were there timer bombs back back then? No, it was just uh, it was one of those. It was one of those because uh, because it like, was triggered you, by the car running. But because you know, normally, like if if you have a car blow up, wouldn't you like when they turn it on, then it blows up? Yeah, but they're not all foolproof. I mean, obviously, whoever's driving the car is supposed to be him. So because it's his car, so I mean, after he's driving for so many seconds, then the car will blow up. But that's like a timer, though. Yeah, but it's 1960. Exactly. It's not 19. It's not 2013. Like that's why you telling us in you. He's saying that there's a flaw with that. And, and yeah, because no, to thing. me that was more realistic. And the reason why is because everything back then wasn't like perfect. Like I'm sure the bomb it went off like seconds after he. It was seconds. He charged. He started the car. He pulled off, got pissed, jumped out of the car, and then the car blew up. Yeah, but what I'm saying though is that the bomb should have went off when the, when he turned the that's that's to that to me that's too movie ish that's too for phony, that to me is like too Hollywood I, that's that's cliche as well it's like as soon as you turn the ignition on it just blows up it's 1960 I mean I mean there has to be nothing is nothing is perfect the, the littlest imperfections are the things that make things more realistic but but we don't know if that was an imperfection because maybe it was supposed to go off when he, when he turned the turned the, the car on but it didn't and if then it fails and then it went six seconds got to get to the car well, you, you maybe know so i mean these guys are ranchers they got trying to kill them they're they're not the bomb experts so maybe there's some dust from the ranch or some manure that got stuck in the timer i don't know caused it to i was just a little, a little bit late i don't know who knows but it was fine with it. I was fine with it. You wanted to go off as soon as you started the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem. It didn't work for the script. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it was. It, it, it didn't, didn't work for the script. Story. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you, Vegas writers. I don't, have a problem with, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it going off a few minutes late or a few seconds, a few seconds late. That's not a problem for me. So the guys are regrouping, and now Savino is not going to bounce now, especially since they blew his car up. Mm -hmm. That means they're going really going after him, and yeah. it really will be probably unwise for him to go try to hide out somewhere by himself because it'll be easier for them to. To get up, chop yeah. down yeah. the whole organization out in Vegas uh, with him not there to head it up. So he goes and he teams up with the Lambs, and where do they go? They go to uh, good old Jones's house. Now Jones, I thought Jones was <laughs> dead. I couldn't remember what happened to Jones, to be honest with you. But the fact that he's, I thought he died too. Like something happened, or, like, yeah. or he, he disappeared. Something happened. But this guy's from Milwaukee. What is he doing? Posted up in some two bedroom shack. In Vegas, he gets around though, like, cause like that that's his thing. Like he, you know, he's from Milwaukee, but he gets around. Yeah, that was like the strangest scenario right there. But anyway, they go, going on Jones. I, I bet nobody. If you guys expected or remember exactly what happened to Jones, please give us a call. I don't remember what happened to Jones, but Jones just comes out of nowhere, and he's going to be a part of this plan. Mercenary, right? So they've got Jones a part of the the situation or the scenario now, and. <laughs> They have him, and it was funny is he, this guy's serving cookies, and he's not eating the cookies. Oh, I don't like cookies. I just like the smell. Yeah, it was like I thought he was trying to kill them all right there on the spot. <laughs> yeah. He was but like, no, 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 drop no, a little remember, cyanide in these. That's his. That's his thing though, because like even with the alcohol, you know, remember like when, when we first introduced right, to a yeah. to a Jones, he liked the smell of alcohol. Yeah, he, like he didn't he didn't drink alcohol, but he enjoyed the smell. The smell. So right. he just like a weird kook like that. So you know, like that's why, like, like that was a nice, a nice call and a nice, you know, playback to his weirdness original airing. Right. So okay. Well, anyway, so now Jones is a part of the mix, and they've got him yeah. a part of this uh, scenario, and they're gonna send him to infiltrate uh, since Dixon straight to the house. Put a screwed up the plans, and then Savino. I gotta give Savino. Savino had a right to to bounce because the original plan was between him and Ralph and then Dixon screwed it up and he was like look if you could have could keep a leash on your son then this would have been taken care of and whatever so I'm out yeah but anyway back to them got having Jones they're going to take Jones and use Jones to they cut a deal with Jones apparently and Jones is now going to infiltrate the camp and go kill Gainsley himself where it looks like when he shows up it looks like he Actually, well, and it's he's, turning he's so he can do the negotiation. About, about Jones. Jones is so like 
quirky and smooth the way he just with this, you know, like because he's he's so unsuspecting, right? You know, he's and, a little guy too. Yeah, and you know he walks up to the to the door and he says, "I was sent here by you know you know J- uh, Ralph and Savino, and you know my mission is is to kill Gainsley. Right. I have a gun here in my waistband. You know, I don't really want to use it, but if I have to, I will. Right? You know, I'm here to negotiate. I'm here. I'm here to talk to the highest bidder. Yeah. So that was really funny how he, he – that was pretty savvy of him. So yeah, kudos was, to anybody from Milwaukee. You guys are more savvy than we probably would <laughs> suspect. So uh, Jones really did his thing, and he actually – Slid on in there. He slid on in there, and then uh, Gainsley was like, if you don't have something to give me that's of value in 10 seconds, then you're going to be dead right here on the spot. So he gives him some information. And then just leaves him lingering just enough to lure him to the slaughterhouse. Well, I mean, he basically tells them that, you know, they came here to kill him mm-hmm. and that they're here on your property and I can take you to him. Right. And that's what happened. So he takes him to the property. So he really didn't lie. Because if you think about it, he didn't lie at all. He, he told them all the information. Right. You know. Right. And, you know, it's just Gainsley you know, didn't suspect that he was walking into an ambush. Right. You he, know. In his mind, he's going to the drop he, on them. Exactly. But that's not that's not Jones's fault for assuming. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, I told you where they were at. Yeah. Basically. So, you know. Yeah. If, if, if they got, you know, the angle on you. That's not, that's my, not bad. my fault. Yeah. I just did my job. Exactly. I'm surprised you didn't ask for his twenty grand though. Yeah. I'd have been like, "Where's my, where's my money?" <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, it is Fucking a good money. Point. Yeah, but you know, obviously, whatever the situation was, the deal that uh, Jones had made with uh, Ralph and those guys was a better deal. Oh yeah. Because they were gonna <clears throat> let him go. Yeah. So he can go make money killing people south of the border. He was gonna go cut off to Mexico, I guess. No. And uh, Savino said, I mean, Ralph told him, he said, look, if you come back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you if you come back. <laughs> but, so. but but let's let's go back real quick and, and talk about, uh, you know, you know, because I, I like to call Agent Byrne in the nick of time. Right. <laughs> so going going back to the uh, sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. So the new sheriff that was deemed by the attorney general walks into the sheriff's office. Right. Right. And he and he says to Jack. Mm-hmm. Hey, or you know, I'm the new sheriff. We're gonna take you into protective custody. The lambs. Yeah, the lambs. Yeah, so him and Is it so we're gonna take you into protective custody? You know, so you know, like you won't be in harm's way anymore. Whatever, right. right. And then you know, so Jack was like, "Well, um, you mean you were appointed, you know, sheriff by the same attorney general who took my brother's badge?" Right. Right. Uh-huh. You know, and then so you know, he was saying, "Well, listen, you know, we have to take you," and he was like, "Well." You know, if you're gonna take me, then you know you gotta, you got you gotta come in and fight these fight these deputies here. Right. So it was really, I kind of want to see like an old fashioned shootout. I kind of wanted to see them go at it you too. Know, just just like a real quick. But those guys were outnumbered. It would have been yeah, really stupid for them. In fact, I thought it was really stupid for. I mean, I guess they had to do that cinematically mm-hmm. with the DP or whatever, blah blah blah. Di- you know, directorially, they had these guys line up over here. I mean, they're outnumbered. He, they should have just curved around <laughs> and just, instead of going back behind Jack, they should have just curved around yeah, and, and the, surrounded them. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, what are you going to do? It was yeah. like, you as you and five guys, it's like eight, of eight, nine, ten of us, and you're surrounded. Yeah. How are you going to go into somebody else's sheriff's station? I mean, and, saying, and, and then I'm the it. sheriff now. With your own crew. It's not like he walked in like white collar and was like, yeah, I'm, I'm here's. I'm sorry I have to take over your job. And then actually commandeered the position. But the, actually the whole point was, for them to go and assassinate Dixon and yeah. Jack anyway. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the nick of time. Agent Byrne. A- Agent Byrne comes to nick of time and saves their butt. And then uh, that's when they come up and go meet uh, Ralph and Savino, and Savino at the that's hotel before Savino's his cars, car cars blow blows up. Yeah. Now, let's talk about uh, going back to Mia and Stone. Stone wants to show Mia off to some high rollers at another hotel for lunch. And he's got her a little tipsy on some... <laughs> Some vodka gimlets or whatever. Did he get her tipsy or did or did, did she just get tipsy? I think she just got tipsy. She just said she had one too many. And she's she's a probably victim of circumstance. She's a victim of circumstance, <laughs> and she is grieving for her relationship with Jack because she did say with when she had that drink with her mom, she was like, "I love that man, and I love him." Blah, blah blah. Her mom convinces her. It's like, dude, you're in the mob. He's he's he's, a, he's, he's in the law. law. He's yeah. In the law. How long do you think it's gonna last? But she changed. She was so happy for him. 
just a couple weeks ago. Do you think she, why do you think she changed her mind? She changed her mind because she found out that Jack put the wire ta- yeah. uh, in, in Savino's office. And any of that information would take her down as well. But Mia figured out that Jack was going to, you know, exonerate her, get her exonerated, and everybody else would go down. And she was like, what? And then I wouldn't be able to work, and then I'd be baking biscuits for you? Yeah. Like, you know, he, like Jack had it all worked out in his mind as far as she was concerned. And she didn't like that, uh-huh. that he was manipulating the entire situation. So she didn't want to go out like that just on her own like she's her own woman and I can respect that like you know mm. I he should have just said look there's a bug in that office watch what you say yeah kind of thing but but you know Jack has the MO of withholding information you know from from Mia so you know yeah yeah he's not too savvy when it comes to that yeah, yeah when it comes to uh, how to manipulate and deal with like chess games and dealing with manipulation with people and deceit. He's really just a good straight up guy. So when it comes to that, that's not really his forte, unfortunately. And it didn't work out to his benefit because he didn't even get a chance to propose. But after uh Well he got a chance to propose. I mean not till later. Not till <laughs> not till later. So they make it out of the situation, Ralph and the guys make it out of the situation. They've got Gainsley We think that he's gonna blow this guy's brains out. But he doesn't but he doesn't. He throws Savino, the shotgun, and cuffs him. Cuffs him. Yeah. And he's like, this guy kills your wife? Like, what kind of man are you? Like, what? Are you going to let this guy, how are you going to let this guy get away? He's like, well, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I was ready for Savino to really cap him right there. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then here comes Officer Nick of, in the nigga time. <laughs> nigga the time. In the nigga time. Uh, Agent Byrne comes up. And then he's like, you called the feds? You called the FBI? Like, Vince is like, I can't believe this dude. Unbelievable. This guy, he knows this guy killed his wife, and he calls the cops. He just arrested him. And he calls the feds and just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, and then Savino knows. So it alludes to this guy would still be around because he said he's just as powerful or more powerful in the prison system as he is yeah. on yeah. the street. So I don't that's know. something that they got to deal with. But I think, it, I think that that was the best thing to do because, you know, if – if uh, if Ralph would have done that, then he would have kind of been on the bad side, and then he and potentially Savino could be friends, or you know, would that really put him on the bad side though? A little bit, and so I think it's better to for him to do the right thing. It's like would the right thing be shooting be, him? Though? Well, no, because he's a cop, so it's like. But he do killed his wife. Yeah. Okay, but he's a cop. He's an honest man. So he, he wants, still be honest. He could honestly he kill wasn't him. a cop. But he wanted, <laughs> he needed Savino's help uh-huh. to help him. And then now that he got Savino's help, he did kind of play him dirty. Now he does the he does the right thing to do. Uh-huh. And so now, if there would have been a season two, season three, now they would have been back as kind of frenemies where they. Sometimes they're friends, sometimes enemies. Right. You know, and they would have continued to, he would have continued to pursue him or whatever. Okay. Well, let us know what you guys think. So I think Bam it was thinks, smart. Bam thinks it was the right thing for Ralph to do, and not for, to shoot uh, Gainsley and to turn him into the FBI. I think that it's a gray area. I want to know what you guys think, and you guys should you can let us know on on iTunes or let us know on YouTube or Twitter and uh, or you can call in right now and let us know what you think about that that's that's kind of a flip of a coin type of situation right there so damned if you do damned if you don't that's right no I, I think I mean you should just I think it would have been good either way I, I think, think it would have been I think it was you know it, it would have been either way it would have been like oh well you know what do you expect well, you know I mean moral of the story is Jack's a good guy. Or Ralph's a good guy. Ralph would have shot him if Dixon wasn't there, guaranteed. Hmm. I, that's my opinion. My opinion is he would have definitely got him. Probably would have. Yeah, he would have, you know, he would have let him go. Dixon was there. He would have let him so. go into the netherworld. Yeah, yeah, Gainsley would have been floating away uh. if Dixon wasn't there. And that's what he said later to him. He said, oh, there was a good man that had a gun on him, had a chance to shoot him, blah, 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 gave him this whole... Little father, they they had their their little their father moment. son son moment, and you know what I think what was nice too was they like they, they really kind of wrapped it up nice. 
uh, you know, they kind of put a nice, nice little LeBeau in it for everybody except for uh, Jack. But, you know, when Yvonne coming, you know, going to the hospital. And they put so, a bow in it for Tommy. Yeah, well, you know, Tommy, Tommy was, was, was going get, to get his. But well, let's talk about you know. that real quick because Jack goes to Mia's house and he's like, I swear if I get out of this situation alive, he tells me, he goes and knocks on her door that uh, I was going to propose. This guy gets on a knee. His good knee. He's getting on a knee and sees a guy walk up behind this girl with a towel on. What if we would have just shot him right there? What if we would have? <laughs> crime of passion. Just crime of passion. Pie, yeah. Crime of passion. And he's a sheriff. Yeah. That that is that's rough. Yeah. He stood up, put his hat on. He's and not said, the sheriff okay, anymore. Sorry. sorry that bothered you. Who's by, not the sheriff anymore? By the time he had, uh, his brother got the position back. Well, he's still a deputy though. He's still a sheriff's deputy. Oh, okay. So. He never stopped become being a. Yeah, he a never law lost his badge. Yeah, he he never stopped becoming a law enforcement officer. Gotcha. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah that tough, was man. that was tough for Jack. <laughs> I mean, you had to expect that not gonna last. And uh, now Tommy is all about those Mia goods. Those but are it, all his. Again, I think that was something Mia decided to do just to get Jack out of her system, or so she thought. Right. But, She's Can not. He's not out. Of, he's not out his system, or she's not. Or he's, he's not, not. He's not out of her system. Yeah. Thank you. Correct. And if there was a season two, they would eventually get back right. together. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's but, tough. Yeah, it is tough. It is. I feel bad for Jack. Yeah. That's called rancher injustice. <sighs> anyway, so uh, let's talk. Uh, let's go to news and gossip, guys. News and gossip. After Buzz TV news. Okay, so we don't have any. We already spilled the beans. <laughs> obviously, uh, Vegas of uh, CBS. CBS is Vegas, starring Michael Chiklis and Dennis Quaid. It has not been renewed for a second season. Unfortunately, we're gonna miss it. And uh, if you guys feel otherwise, and you guys feel like it should come back, petition. Know, right? Yeah, write a letter or send an email to uh, CBS petitioning petitioning Les it Moonves. for for comeback to, for a comeback to come back or whatever. Because we enjoyed the show, and obviously the fans of the show. Uh, enjoyed it because you you watched it, but uh, if you want to see it come back, then you have to. My write, biggest write something. My yeah. biggest pet peeve is you know when it first started off, it it was high in numbers. It was at like fourteen million, and then it dropped off to twelve and to so about eight. Now it stayed consistently at about seven to eight million viewers. Was it seventeen? I think it was seventeen million to start off. Yeah, right, it started right? off really really high, yeah. and, and it dropped, and so, but. There are plenty of shows that are still on the air mm-hmm. that do seven, eight million views. I mean, even Scandal. Scandal only has eight million viewers, you know, a week. So I don't understand. Was it because of the expectation or because of the caliber of actors and money involved? Because I, I think seven million viewers is still a sufficient amount of viewers. Yeah, especially weekly. with especially with all the uh, the entertainment outlets yeah. that are that distract people. I mean, the numbers are down for everybody for film for television. Yeah. Because you have internet, you have mobile devices, you have so many different entertainment outlets that uh, allow people to, to DVR, d- yeah, yeah. D- DVR, distract them from and with, yeah, watching with, a, watching any one particular. And with thing. the whole thing with Nelson is doing with the Twitter thing, I don't, which is I don't, I don't see the, I don't dis, I uh, don't agree with it, but you know, Nelson's uh, ratings is now going to, um, is going to, in, and somehow combine the ratings with Twitter. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. It's going to be interesting Interesting to see how they do that and see. So tweet. Are they tweet gonna do CBS. That, are they do that with hashtags or something? I wonder how they're going to integrate that into their system. That will be really interesting to see how Nielsen plans on uh, incorporating that. I don't see it. Mm, well, whatever. Yeah. So what who cares? And, of course, we don't have any predictions because my prediction is uh, Michael Chiklis and Dennis Quay will be making movies. And the rest of the crew, Amy Garcia, will be making movies. And, and RoboCop. And she'll be making RoboCop that's coming up. And uh, everybody will be doing their thing. We'll be definitely seeing Carrie Ann Moss and something else, I'm sure. Um, and a few other of those actors that were on the show. And thank you, to, uh, thank you to Amy. Jack Omar. Yeah. Thank yeah. you to Amy Garcia, who came. And thank you to uh, Steve Rizzo, the stunt guy. Jason Omar, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Jason Amaro. <laughs> yeah, and, thank you, and thank you to, to Jason Amaro, who tweeted us, who sent messages to us, thanking us for, um, for being such fans of the show. Yeah. Going to miss you guys. 
until next time, you can find me. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know in a second. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey. Where can we find you guys? <laughs> you can find me all over the internet at the Nick Purdue. You can follow me at Bam Erickson on Instagram and Twitter, or you can also find me at Big Six Entertainment and look out, uh, look out for a film of mine that's coming out uh, later this year called The Shack. The Shack, and I'm your host again, Thaddeus Massey. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Club Thaddeus, and you can find me online at GQ Jedi, GQJEDI.com. Till next time after buzzers. Peace. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.